Welcome to Long Hill and Sedgwick Gardens, a special place with a colorful history filled with family memories, literary and horticultural pursuits, and most of all, gardening. Today, Long Hill welcomes visitors to stroll the gardens and visit the historic house. The trustees have recently invested in a multi-year plan to rejuvenate the public gardens and improve amenities in order to create a revitalized experience for our visitors. This includes the development of a selection of new destinations at Long Hill, including a beautiful garden room designed by Julie Moore Maservi Design Studio in 2020, a pergola and brick terrace where visitors can enjoy a picnic lunch, attend a public program or a private event, and we are thrilled to open the main house to the public, which will feature a gift shop and grab-and-go food for sale. We're standing at Long Hill, which we know today as this beautiful garden that was started in the early 20th century. But Long Hill was really part of a vast area that was occupied by the Penacook and the Pawtucket peoples prior to European settlement. In 1635, Beverly was settled by European settlers who came here longing for the rich harbor of the Danvers River and the rich fertile ground for farming. The earliest map we have for Long Hill is in 1836, showing this entire property of 114 acres as farmland. There's a farmhouse down at the bottom of the hill where the Appleton family lived, and they stayed here up to the early 20th century. In 1916, when Mabel Sedgwick and Ellery were looking for a place for their summer home, this entire 114 acres had been subdivided up into building lots. Mabel didn't know that it was for sale, and she walked through a wooded path and came upon what she described as a pine grove and a dingle and a dell and a cedar-strewn hillside, and she knew that she had found the place for their summer home. So she bought the entire 114-acre parcel, and that became what we now know as Long Hill. Long Hill was owned and cared for by the Sedgwick family from 1916 to 1979, their beloved summer home that in the 1950s became their year-round haven. Mabel Cabot Sedgwick, an accomplished gardener and author of The Garden Month by Month, and her husband, Ellery Sedgwick, noted author and editor of The Atlantic Monthly, summered here until Mabel passed in 1937. After Mabel's death, Ellery married Marjorie Russell Sedgwick, a rare plant specialist. The combined creative vision of these two women led to the design of Long Hill's enchanting gardens surrounded by more than 100 acres of woodland. Before coming to Long Hill, Mabel became a very important author. She wrote a book in 1907 called The Garden Month by Month. The book itself had a color plate at the back, so every listing of a plant had a description of the plant, it had its height, it had color, and each color plate at the back had a number, so any garden designer could get the right color of orange and red or blue that exactly matched what they wanted in their border design. In 1916, Mabel and Ellery actually planted what became the first plant at Long Hill, which is the copper beech tree that stands in front of the house today. That tree was planted even before the house was conceived. It took them seven years to plan not only the gardens and grounds, but the house. And in fact, the planning for the gardens continued all the way through the 1930s. Mabel had wanted to create something that was a combination of their passionate interest in the Japanese arts and Japanese gardens and the English idea of a wild garden, meaning plants and garden plants that were introduced into the native vegetation that was already on the site. So the cedar trees in this former pasture became the nurse trees for the small cultivated plants that she wanted to grow and spawn. The other thing that you'll find unusual in the Long Hill Gardens are the sinks and the small little garden pools full of water lilies, another favorite of Marjorie Russell Sedgwick. The story of Long Hill is quite remarkable. 
and it began when Ellery Sedgwick and his wife Mabel found this beautiful plot of land that today is Long Hill. Ellery Sedgwick and Mabel Sedgwick, when they built this house, really knew that it was something to showcase. And the reason that it looks like a Charleston, South Carolina house is that they took architectural salvage from a mansion that was built in 1812 by the Ball family. They brought all of that woodwork, all of that salvage to this house and incorporated it into the house that we know today. So it's a real spirit to this property that Charleston is in the bones of the construction of the house. They also used wallpaper that was brought over from Chinese export that they found in an antique shop in London. They looked at mantles and brought those from other locations. Even some of the brick here was from a hosiery mill in Ipswich. So it's quite interesting how they brought all of these pieces together. And the woodwork was something that we not only thought was beautiful, but we've really come to understand that it had a long history of craftsmanship. Many enslaved craftsmen were part of the work that went into the interiors that we now have at Long Hill. Those include Thomas and Guy, Jeffrey and Plenty, Marcus, Pompey, Bill, Drummer and Fortune, and so many others. And we know this because we have lists of tools that they used, intricate tools that only a skilled craftsman would use. When you come into Long Hill, you can't help but notice the wallpaper. It surrounds you in the Great Center Hall. And this was definitely something that caught the eye of Ellery and Mabel Sedgwick when they were in London. And in the early 1920s, they found 24 panels of wallpaper in a barrel in this antique shop. It was Chinese export wallpaper made in the early 1800s. They took the barrel and brought it overseas to Long Hill and wanted to incorporate the remarkable wallpaper into the interior that we have today. Upstairs at Long Hill, in one of the former bedrooms, we have a mural. It's beautiful because it's the gardens coming in to the former residence of the Sedgwicks. It was hand-painted by Mabel Sturges, and you'll notice that it includes little animals and birds and flowers and plants that you find here in the gardens. It's just another example of how the gardens come alive inside the house as well as outside. One of the things that I love about Long Hill is that there's so much layered history here. It is built on a foundation of a family that loved history, that loved the outdoors, that loved bringing all of these elements together. So as we as caretakers for Long Hill look to future generations, we are so excited to tell those stories as we continue to uncover them here. The garden is magnificent at this time of year. We are here in the spring when things are in full bloom and gorgeous, but this is a garden that you want to come back to week after week, month after month, because truly there is something to see in this garden all year round. The garden is composed of over 2,500 trees and shrubs, which are all now cataloged. They are identified, they have labels on them, and they are entered into our database as part of our process to really curate the collection here and develop a world-class public garden. There are trees and shrubs from around the world, including magnificent specimens of things like Japanese snowbell. There are several different types of stewardias in the garden. Early in the spring season, the garden is just populated with beautiful magnolias in bloom and cherry trees, weeping cherries, upright cherries, seedling cherries that have made their way along the woodland edges. That tree and shrub collection is one of the most exciting things for people to see because they'll see things here that they rarely see in cultivation in this neck of the woods. Additionally, there is a layer under that of perennial plants, herbaceous perennial plants that are on their own right worth a trip to come see at Long Hill. There's no clear line of demarcation between where Mabel and Marjorie cultivated plants and where Mother Nature takes over. And it creates this really enchanting air in the garden and this sense of mystery. So you meander through these paths and there's something to discover around every turn. It really is a fun garden in that aspect. Intermingled along with the plants that Mabel and Marjorie added are the plants that three horticulturists added from 1979 right up to the present and, and continue to add to the richness in this garden. So this is a really exciting time at Long Hill. No new gardens essentially have been added since Mabel and Marjorie finished cultivating the gardens in the 1970s. And now we have the opportunity to just step back and look at Long Hill as a public garden space and expand on the living collections that we have here. 
I'm really excited for the future of Long Hill. It has this wonderful, treasured, historic past to it, and we want to carry that past forward and just enjoy the treasure that it is. Since the trustees assumed ownership of the property in 1979, we have maintained that excellent vision of the Sedgwick family and continue to offer an incredible visitor experience inside this public garden. Today, visitors can take in the sweet aromas, vivid colors, and botanical diversity of the Sedgwick Gardens, where there are five acres of cultivated grounds that are laid out in a series of separate garden rooms, rendered in an informal or wild garden style, accented by ornaments, statuary, and mature plantings that blend seamlessly into the woodlands. Visitors can also learn more about the gardens, family history, and the elegant federal brick house. Surrounding the formal gardens, guests can hike around the neighboring woodland on a network of trails, including the main 1.2 mile loop trail. Other areas of interest include the apple orchard, children's gardens, and garden production spaces. Lastly, everyone is encouraged to take part in one of the many horticultural programs or public events through the Putnam Horticultural Center. These programs were designed for all ages and ability levels. With all there is to see and do at Long Hill, we hope you'll come back and visit us many times throughout the year. We hope to see you soon. <laughs>